Hello everyone, this lesson is going to focus on the implementation of Faraday's discovery that a changing magnetic field can create a current, all right? And we're gonna look at some applications of this and how that starts to apply to our everyday life. All right, so let's kind of get into it. So Faraday's big discovery was that a changing magnetic field creates a current. And we saw this in real life, we demoed this. Um, but then we went on to say, well, what about Ver? Let's not ignore that. So the, main, what, the, the idea was that a changing magnetic field creates an EMF. Now the EMF acts like the V in Ver, all right? In, in fact, it has the units of volts, all right? So it's, it's kind of like um, change of magnetic field in certain conditions can create a voltage, which then creates a current, all right? Now, the EMF, all right, um, can be created with, with several different processes, all right? And we, we didn't see that with the, um, our last lesson, or our previous lesson, because I didn't want to get bogged down in the mathematics of it. So we'll do another lesson on the mathematics of EMF and change the magnetic field and see how that works out, all right? But for now, um, we can go over the concepts in that an EMF can be created with several different ways, all based off this idea, but there's uh, kind of stipulations to it, all right? Um, one of them is we can just uh, change the strength of the magnetic field. And we saw that in our demo where I literally took um, our magnet and moved it in and out of coils. That means the ma as the magnet went in, the magnetic field got stronger. As the magnet went out, the magnetic field got less, all right? And we saw um, the current being made because the EMF was being made. Another thing we can do is change the size or change the area of the coils. Now that's usually pretty hard to do, all right? There are applications of it, but that's hard to demonstrate because I have coils that are kind of fixed in size. And the last one we can do is change the direction or the orientation between the magnetic field and the coils, all right? And we saw this demo here, all right? We see that when um, when I press this thing, the magnet starts to spin. The magnet doesn't get stronger or uh, weaker. It just it changes the direction of it because it's spinning around. And that direction changes in the coils here. All right, it's kind of a combination, I guess, the first one and the third one. All right, and when we do that, we get current. All right. Um, what we're going to focus on mainly uh, in this lesson is this last um, uh, scenario because this is the most common, all right? And I'm going to show you how this works, okay? Okay, so let's look at this diagram here, this setup here, all right? I have um, two magnets, the north and the south, and in between here is a wire, all right? And it's oriented um, like a loop, okay? Here's an axis. Here's a wire here that goes around. This is all wire, this is all wire, and they come out this way, all right? Now, what we're gonna do with this, all right, is we're going to spin this wire, all right? It's kind of like you can imagine this, all right? If this is a wire, we can see A, B, C, D, but in this diagram here, all right, in this diagram here, this is flat, all right? And I try to do that here, but I'm not the best artist, but. Um, this is flat and what's going to happen is, so you can see here's A, B, C, and D. This thing is going to rotate this way, all right? It's going to spin around this way with the um, one pole of the magnet here and the other pole of the magnet here, all right? So what's going to happen is here's the axis and it's going to spin this way, all right? It's going to spin this way. Now remember, while it's spinning, it's inside a magnetic field. All right, so we're not changing the strength of the magnetic field. We are not increasing or decreasing the size of the coils, all right, that's set. But what we are doing is changing the direction that the magnetic field is oriented with respect to the axis, all right? So let's imagine my fingers are the magnetic field and they're pointing this way, all right? And they're gonna stay pointed this way. So right now, we can see that none of my fingers are going through the coils. All right, that's how they're oriented. But as I rotate this thing, now all my fingers are going through the coils. All right, remember the coils are like this, if I flatten it out, all right, 
all my fingers are going through the coils, which means all the magnetic field is going through, a max amount of magnetic field is going through the coils. As it rotates again, it changes, and I have um, magnetic fields going above and below, but not through the coils, and that's kind of part, that's the key, all right? Um, so as this thing turns, as this thing spins, the amount, uh, the, the orientation of the magnetic field of the spectacle coils is changing. And that creates this EMF, all right? So let's look at this a little bit more in detail and see what happens with that EMF. Okay, so with these coils here, all right, as I flatten this out and spin them this way, rotate them this way, all right, you can see um, from A to B, this section of A and B, as I rotate it, a and B goes up on one side and then down on the other, all right? Up on one side and then down on the other. And then as it continues to spin, it goes up and then it goes down, all right? In the direction that, that A and B is literally moving, all right? Now, what happens is when that rotates, we get an EMF, all right, that causes a current. All right, because EMF is the V invert, and voltage causes current. And current is going to go one way. In this case here, the current's going this, and it's going um, clockwise, all right, in this, in this diagram at least, all right? And these are the outlets from the wires, all right? So we can go plug this into our phones or whatever we need to, all right? So you got to imagine there's a resistor down here completing the loop, but the current is going this direction. And the important thing here is that from A to B, when A to B goes up, the current travels from point A to point B. All right, can we see that? Now, when it switches orientation to the other side, all right, we still have current essentially going the same way in this diagram, but think about what you're seeing here. Now, we have A and B, but look at the direction that the current is now actually going, all right? Since B is going down, all right, um, we can see the current now travels from B to A. It's essentially switched directions. From here, we can see the current traveled from point A towards point, sorry, uh, from point A towards point B. And in this, the current went from point B to point A, all right, and was going down. So what does that tell us about the, the current? It is switching directions as this thing rotates, all right? Um, I can give you a little bit of example here, not in that one, but um, when I create some current from this demo that we've already seen, pay attention to the direction um, of the current, all right? And let me show you that here. Okay, so we've seen this demo already, and it's still fascinating. I can make electricity, all right? just by moving a magnet in and out of coils, all right? And that's proven by the ammeter here. Every time um, the ammeter isn't on zero, there's coil, or sorry, there's current. But what I want you to like focus on here is um, where that needle actually is. So we can focus on is that um, when the, there's no current, it's at zero. Everything to the right is positive, everything to the left is negative. But notice when I generate this current going in and out, it goes to both sides of the zero. So when it's on the right side, that's telling me positive current, and on the left side is negative current. Now what does that mean? All that means is that the current is going different directions, positive directions and negative directions, all right? So when it's positive, you can imagine it going in this wire, sorry, in this wire, in this wire. When it's negative, it's going against the wire, all right? So we had the current changing direction. Okay, so from that demo, we saw that the ammeter read positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, as I kept switching the magnetic field, all right? The same thing would be happening in our diagram here, all right? The direction of the current would be positive, negative, back and forth, back and forth. So essentially, to, you know, to summarize that, when A and B went up, the current went from A to B. When A and B went down, the current went from B to A. It changes direction. So in other words, the current was alternating direction, all right? So let's kind of um, look at that on a simple circuit and see the, the differences on what we've seen before to what we just figured out now. Okay, so when we did our 
um, electricity and symbol circuits before, we were we started with a regular battery, all right, or a voltage supply. And in this case, it would look like this, which we've seen before, all right. There's our battery, here's our battery, and it has a positive and a negative side, all right. And in this battery, that positive and negative side stays the same. It doesn't switch, all right. It's, it's permanent label, it's painted on there, positive, and the other side is negative. So in this case here, this side would stay positive, this side would stay negative, and the current would continue in the same direction, all right? That, when the voltage stays the same, the current stays the same, and that is what we call a direct current. In other words, DC, direct current, stays the same. Well, in our coils here that is spinning, all right, in a magnetic field, we are creating our EMF, which gives us a uh, current. We don't need a battery. And in this case here, this whole thing is the EMF, which is voltage. So we can, re so this thing here essentially replaces this. Now I draw the same um, diagram, but this quote unquote battery is not a battery anymore. All right, this quote unquote battery, this voltage is this. This is how we're making this. And so we see that the EMF, the voltage is switching. As that thing spins, it switches directions. So if these positive and negative keep switching, then that means the current through here would keep switching, all right? Our conventional current goes from positive to negative, but if this positive and negative switch, then the current will go this way, and as the positive goes the other side, well then it will reverse and go the other way. The current will keep going back and forth, back and forth, all right? And when the current alternates direction, that is called an alternating current, which we say AC, all right, an alternating current. So we have AC and DC, alternating current, direct current, okay? Okay, so now we have two ways of essentially making electricity or dealing with electricity. We can hook up batteries, all right, and do direct current, or we can make these things and do alternating current. So which one do we do? Well, there's... I guess there's positive and negatives to both, all right? But let's start with the, the simple one here. For a battery, well, what happens to a battery? It, uh, first of all, it, they die. They eventually, the chemicals in here eat away at each other enough so it doesn't create a voltage anymore, and then we have to replace the battery, all right? Which gets expensive, there's bad chemicals in here, and um, it's just not very efficient, all right? This is the basics of um, an electric generator, all right? Now, the idea of, well, which one do we use, AC or DC? Well, that was actually fought, that, that simple question was not literally fought over, but kind of a long, long time ago, all right? Um, in the early 1900s, we have everybody's favorite um, inventor, Thomas Edison, and we love him in New Jersey because he's from here, we named town after him, you know, everybody grows up thinking he's the, the best inventor. Turns out, that is bogus. He was, he was a, a, a jerk. He didn't, he was very greedy and he wanted to do what, what would work for his company, all right? And what he made his fortune on is DC, all right? The, the inventor of the light bulb, all that stuff, but really he, he was a big proponent of working DC currents, all right? And so that's how it started out. Um, but then a guy, uh, an, an immigrant to the United States by the name of Nikola Tesla, Nikolai Tesla, um, which we've already heard the name because that's the, the unit of magnetism, he actually comes over and he starts working for Newton, all right? And he does some modifications in Newton's, uh, I'm sorry, no, I said, said Newton, I meant uh, Edison. Comes over and works for Edison, and uh, Edison pays him um, or gives him a job and guarantees him all this money to you know, do some modifications. And when he does it, um, and Edison is inspecting, Edison doesn't pay him. He said, well, you didn't understand American humor, like you're an immigrant, and, you know, get out of get out of my face. So Tesla, all right, he gets out of his face, and he goes on to essentially invent the electric generator, all right? He uses these principles, and he essentially builds these things, all right? This is his idea. He takes Faraday's physics and implements it into something we can use, all right? And... 
he starts um, his own system of alternating currents. I think it originates kind of up in uh, Niagara, kind of up in... Uh, um, now that kicked off the big war, essentially, between alternating current versus DC current. Tesla wanted the alternating current, and um, Edison wanted DC current. So, who was the winner? Well, um, after a lot of um, you know, testing and stuff and figuring out which one was the best, all right, there was a couple things that came out of it. Um, DC is, well, spoiler alert, DC current is the loser. Edison is the loser in this, all right? Even after massive smear campaigns to show how bad AC current um, would be, a lot of propaganda, um, fortunately, the, the public and the businesses and everything else saw through the propaganda and went with the better science, the better engineering. All right. And that, that's really nice. I'm not so um, sure that would happen nowadays. All right. I'm not confident that the American public is strong enough uh, scientifically to see through propaganda. Unfortunately, that's that's I have very, very little faith in America right now. Um, but I have a lot of faith in my students. All right. And by learning this kind of stuff, I'm, I'm hoping we can do what's right, just like. We did what we tried back then in selecting the AC to DC, all right? Now, um, getting back to the electricity side, if you've ever built like forts in your house and you had to run long lines of extension cords, you'll, you'll notice that uh, electricity just doesn't go on forever, all right? Um, I remember back when I was building a fort, we would build a fort in like in the middle of the woods and we uh, wanted to camp out there. so. You know, we wanted to run um, extension cord where we can just put, you know, a uh, power strip and then we could plug in a TV, play video games, everything. Turns out when you run it that far, the, the only thing would power was one light bulb. All right. Because it was, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of yards through a single extension cord and the power dissipated just isn't strong enough. And that's what would happen with DC current. All right. It, we would have to build substations to build it up. The wires really thick. It was it was actually more dangerous than, than alternating current. Um, but so, so DC was, was just not going to work. All right. AC had, um, a lot of stuff that we could, a lot of advantages. All right. We'll talk about that here. So a big advantage on AC was that we were able to, um, send it very, very long distances without these substations that DC would need. All right. And the reason why we can do that, why we can send it far is because Alternating current allows us to build transformers. Now, transformers, all right, they're not robots in disguise. I hate to break it to you, but that's fake, all right? Um, fun idea, fun story, but that's fake. This transformer is the real deal. What this transformer does is changes alternating current voltage, and that's it, all right? Now, how does it do that? Well, if we go back to Kind of what Faraday's original original apparatus was to discover uh, essentially electromagnetism. All right, we have our coils here and our coils on the other side. All right, this is an input voltage and an output voltage. You can imagine the input voltage could be the simple um, electric generator like this. All right, or it could be the simple coils where we moving a magnet in and out. All right, now you in that, um, or it could be this. All right, this is generating voltage with um, magnets. That's this side. Now, you, you, got, you can imagine that this is not producing a lot of voltage and a lot of current. All right, it's, it's a very, very small light, which doesn't need a lot of current. So let's imagine um, we're only, we only have so much that we can do, and that's our input. But it turns out, through conservation, through the um, law of conservation of energy, that if we wrap, more coils on the output side that the voltage will actually go up all right now how is this how does this possible um that that's it seems like we're getting uh something free for nothing well there is a trade-off all right and if we went through the math the trade-off is that as if we increase the voltage over here the current would go down and that sounds um like it goes against ver but weird things happen with alternating current all right and the biggest thing is we don't want to violate the law of conservation of energy, 
right? So anyway, um, what we can do is we can input, we can, let's say I build a little tiny generator and it only can produce one, a maximum of one volt. That's not going to do very much uh, if I want to power something. What I can do is hook up this generator to a transformer and all I have to do is wrap more coils on the output side, the secondary side, and that will increase the voltage. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio. If I have three volts, so I, you can see I have three coils here. If I put in one volt here, all right, with three coils, over here I have six coils. That's double the coils, so I'll get double the voltage, all right? I put in one volt, I get out two volts. I put in 100 volts, I get out 200 volts. Just by wrapping more coils. It's really nice. So we can trans, we can change the um, the voltage. All right, we can increase or decrease. And likewise, if I went less volts over here, I can de sorry less coils over here. I can decrease the voltage. Now this only works. Transformers only work with alternating current. All right, because remember, if I have a changing current in, right from our generator, from our generator, an alternating current, that changing current will make a changing magnetic field in here, and that changing magnetic field here will make a changing current output, all right? If this was a direct current in, a direct current here would make a magnetic field, but that magnetic field would be constant, it would not change. And a constant magnetic field does not make a current at all. So transformers would not work in DC, all right? Now let's see how these transformers are used um, overall in our everyday lives. So getting back to the war between AC and DC, uh, one of the major things we saw was that, or we said, is that um, it's hard to send electricity very far. All right, guys, that well with alternating current, all right, here's kind of the idea. PSC and G makes electricity, all right, makes the alternating current electricity. What they do is go to a step-up transformer. In other words, that increases the voltage, all right? And um, based on law of conservation of energy, when the voltage goes really high, the current goes really low, which is good because we saw high current produces a lot of heat. And now this low current, high voltage can travel very, very far distances, all right? That's why we have high voltage lines. So if I don't live near PSC and G, I live... 200 miles away, all right, and another town doesn't have a power plant like this, they can still send this um, high voltage, low current, electric, alternating current very efficiently. And now we can get down, um, when it comes into our town, hundreds of miles away, we'll go to a step down transformer, and then we'll send that voltage along a regular power line, or local power line, into our house, all right? And notice I have here, that it's coming into our house at 240 volts, all right? Well, if you remembered um, a while ago, I'd mentioned that our house, our, the sockets in our house are 200 and, I'm sorry, 120 volts, and this is coming in double. We'll talk about that in a second, all right? Okay, so now we um, understand how alternating current can get to our house, all right? It comes into our house at 240 volts, but I said it was at 120, 120 volts, all right? Um, and what you may not realize in your house is that you have um, two different types of outlets, actually, all right? You have a 240-volt outlet and 120. Now, these ones we're used to, all right? This is the outlet where the guy's surprised, all right? This is the outlet where the guy's kind of, like, sad and depressed, all right? Seen these, you may not have seen these. These plugs are for your big appliances that you would not move in your house, uh, your hot water heaters, uh, your ovens, probably washer and dryer. So they're permanently pu plugged in because they need the extra power, if you will. And so you don't, see, you're not unplugging and plugging things in here. These are for our common um, smaller appliances. All right, plug in your phone, plug in your light bulbs, um, all that nonsense. All right. Now these um, plugs are unique around the world. All right, and uh, it comes from like your local power grid. So the idea is this is a 120 volt um, alternating current. All right, it's an AC circuit. And, and weird things happen with AC. And before I forget, let's, let's 
what about our, our our smaller electronics that don't need or that don't need 120 volts? It's maybe it's too powerful. Well, when we plug stuff in here, all right, this big old um, plug, you're like, well, why does it need a humongous plug when it's gonna plug into something very, very small? This is a transformer. It's not just, transformers aren't just things that are, you know, on power lines and use uh, on, on big, um, really, really high scale. This is a transformer. And it has the, um, somewhere on here, yeah, it has electrical information here, all right? And it'll say, uh, what does it say? Input um, anywhere between 100 to 240 volts, and it gives the current at, what is the current? Um, one and a half amps, all right? Now, the output, all right, which is on this side, whatever I'm plugging this thing as it comes out of this, the output is only at 16.5 volts. So it went from a, anything above 100 down to 16.5. What does that tell you about the current? The current must go up. And the output here is um, 3.65 amps, all right? So you use transformers more than you realize, all right, to change um, voltages for what we need. And this only works with AC. It would not work with DC. So another reason why we do that, all right? Okay, so now we have a, a pretty good idea of um, our household circuit. It's, it's alternating current. Um, we can kind of talk about where it comes from, all right? Um, we use alternating current, so it's gonna come from this, all right? This is an electric, this is the basis of an electric generator. Your sockets in your house, almost, almost directly, but I guess indirectly, you gotta go through like, um, you know, some transformers. Go back to this thing here, all right? You, the plugs and sockets in your house are not hooked up to a battery. It's not hooked up to one of these. Now, if you have solar, it, that's a little bit different, all right? You can, more and more houses are starting to get batteries to save up some electrical energy, but the majority of them, and historically, um, they don't have that. So they go to electric generators. Now, we know that these things spin. That's how they get the EMF, and that causes... Um, on alternating current. Now the rate at which is it, you can imagine if this thing spins faster, then the direction of the current will change even faster. If it spins slower, then the direction will take longer to change, all right? And the rate at which that changes and how much voltage it puts out has been standardized, but in different regions of the world, all right? And what I mean by that is in the United States, it's standard that this thing will, um, rotated a frequency of 60 hertz, which means that'll change direction 60 times per second, all right? So what does that tell you? Um, when we plug into our socket here, if I hook a light bulb in a socket that, that has an alternating current of 60 hertz, that means the direction in the light, the direction of the current in the light bulb goes back and forth 60 times per second, changes direction 60 times per second. Well, let's think of that. If I'm a current going this way and I got to go back the other way, what do I have to do? I have to stop and then go back the other way. All right. If I'm an electron, I got to go, I'm moving this way with the current. Now the current goes back to it. The electron has to stop and go back this way. Every time that electron stops, every time that current stops, that means there is zero current. If there's zero current going through light bulb, what, is, what would it look like? Well, it will go out. So what's happening is your light bulbs are actually dimming and kind of going off continuously, all right? But it takes a while for the light bulb to like burn out sometimes. So I, I know I'm saying you're weird, but if it's, if it's changing direction and turning off um, 60 times per second, all right, that goes super fast and your eyes cannot keep up with it, all right? Um, and you can kind of see the probably effect here. I can actually move my finger back and forth that the, the rate this camera may not even be able to attack, all right? It kind of starts to look like a blur and that's essentially what's happening with your um, light bulbs, all right? Now, in other parts of the country, I'm sorry, other parts of the world, that is different. Their electrical grid, their electrical systems still go off of this, but they have different frequencies, all right? And it's standard in that part of the world, all right? Now, they also have different plugs. I can show you them here, all right? So electrical grids around the world are a little bit different, all right? This is our uh, North America one that we're used to, all right? We can see that. 
but um, this is a plug that I would have to use in uh, the UK, what is this, uh, Great Britain, Ireland, Africa, Hong Kong, Singapore. They would use this type of plug, all right? Now, fortunately, this is just an adapter for your plug, all right? What I can do is I can take this, I can plug it into this side here, all right? If it goes in, I don't know how easily this thing will go in. There, I plugged it in, and now this will plug into a socket in Great Britain. And this um, transformer will allow whatever's on the end of this, in this case a laptop, to work there. All right, fortunately, most of your electronics now can work with uh, a 50 hertz, which is in Europe, and a 60 hertz, which is in North America, all right? Um, I, I believe way back in the day, you had the, not all electronics worked, everybody you had to get even bigger adapters. These just plug into different countries. So this is for um, Great Britain, this is for, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and China. You can see it's um, the prongs are slanted instead of straight up, all right? And um, here's Northern Europe, all right? They're just straight up round plugs. And there's another one, Southern Europe, which looks similar. Um, they're just a little bit closer, a little bit further apart. I can't remember which one, all right? And I couldn't find the plug now. So the, the electrical systems are different in different worlds, but they all start here, all right? Essentially with Tesla's electric generator, which is built off of Faraday's idea of changing magnetic fields, can create currents. Okay, so the final thought in all of this is going back to electric generator, all right? And remember when I had the current, like the coil here, all right? Well, for the coil, the coil needs to be spinning, all right? And that is the final question. How do you get this coil to spin, all right? Right now, how's it spinning? I am literally spinning it, all right? Um, how did I get this to work? I had to sit there and squeeze it. So how does PSE and G that are running these generators, how does PSE and G make these things spin? All right, because if these things don't spin, then we don't have an electricity for our house at all, all right? Well, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways, um, and it depends on the region you live in. Um, windmills, all right? The whole entire reason why those windmills spin like that is to spin these coils, all right? Or a version of it. That's all. So we're taking the wind energy and converting it into electric energy, that, that the kinetic energy of the air that's moving because of what we should call wind, converting it into rotational kinetic energy, which then is converted into electrical energy, which we can send out to our houses, all right? But then if there's no wind, then, they're, um, then they won't spin. So you, can, you wanna put these things in a spot where there's tends to be a lot of wind, all right? And what's nice about that, it's, um, it doesn't pollute the planet, all right? It's great, wind power, wind electricity is a fantastic idea. Unfortunately, our current um, administration, the country that, that's, that's, that we live in is fairly scientific illiterate. Um, they've been brainwashed and conned into thinking that um, wind power is a bad idea and, and it's embarrassing. But hopefully um, you watching this are not part, can be more of the solution than the problem. Another way we can turn this um, is if we push water through it, all right? With, uh, uh, if we build a dam, and we have all this water stored up, the water can come down fast out of like a couple uh, pipes and can spin these turbines. And that is a good idea um, because it doesn't pollute. However, by building these lakes and, and dams and that can alter uh, an, an ecosystem. So there are ramifications to that, all right? But at least it doesn't pollute the planet and destroy the planet to climate change, all right? Um, but then you have to live in a spot where we can dam up the water, all right? It's going to be very hard to dam up the Delaware River. If we dam up the Delaware River, then Delaware is flooded out, all right? And the whole area, Philadelphia doesn't exist anymore. So you, so you have to be in a spot that's conducive to hydroelectric power, all right? Um, if you go out to Las Vegas, they have the Hoover Dam there. You can go and see these things, all right? It, it, it's, it's pretty wild. Um, if you live in a spot where there's a lot of wind, then you can make your windmill, all right? But that's not everywhere. So... The, the main way we make this, these things spin is through steam, all right? 
as this, we know steam rises and then we can come back and have a rise. And as that steam rises, it, it pushes through turbines and the turbines will spin. And we do that so we can rotate these things and make electricity. So then the question is, well, um, how do you create steam? Well, the worst way is by burning coal, all right? And that's something that our minist the National Administration loves. Um, but what's bad about that? Well, it pollutes the planet. It's, it's super inefficient, super dirty. Um, it's a non-renewable resource, so we'll run out of coal, all right? So that's a terrible idea, but some people, for um, greedy reasons, love it, all right? Um, another way is burning natural, natural gas. That's, that's better than coal. It's not the best, but natural gas is cheaper. It's a little bit cleaner, and I think I'm pretty sure that's the way we do it in, this, in South Jersey is by burning natural gas, almost like a jet engine. We burn that gas, heat to the, and we can almost spin them directly, all right? And then another way, maybe the final way, is through nuclear power, all right? We unleash a nuclear reaction that unleashes energy. We take that energy, we send it into water, heats up the water, the water turns to steam, and it spins. So there's big nuclear power plants exist to turn water into steam just so we can turn these things, all right? And nuclear power has benefits and disadvantages. Um, we have nuclear waste that can be generated. Uh, that's not the best. And where do you store those? That can we can. There's potential, quote unquote, meltdowns like Chernobyl and um, uh, Three Mile Island, but those are pretty rare. Um, but nuclear power plants are expensive. People don't want to live near them because of accidents that can occur. So there's advantages and disadvantages of that. All right. But that's essentially where our electricity comes from. I'm, I can run light bulbs, I can cook, I can watch TV, all because of Faraday's idea and discovery, and then Tesla coming along and, and advancing the physics into something that we can use through engineering, which is, which is fantastic, all right? So that gives us a great picture on how we can live our lives. Um, it gets you educated on decisions going forward with climate change electricity it gives you a bigger picture of the whole idea of energy all right our energy crisis where it comes from um and that, the science side of it all right so um yeah we're thank you for watching and uh i'll see you when i see you